students, I'm Mr. Lam. In this video, I shall talk about the key concepts in the chapter of respiration by doing MC questions and long questions. Of course, I agree and understand that studying biology in molecular level is quite difficult, especially the new concepts learned in this chapter, including glycolysis, Krebs cycles, and the electron transport chain. It seems that no logical connection among them. However, there is still a way to make our life easier when studying this chapter. I shall not cover much molecular level concept in this video, but go through most of the fundamental concepts including respiration and gases exchange. So stay alive and keep breathing. Before we go through the question, I would like to ask you to tell me the difference among respiration, gases exchange, and breathing. Most of you may mix them up here, you have 10 seconds to think about it. First of all, for respiration, it's one of the seven characteristics of life. That's the biochemical reaction to break down food to release energy. In junior form, we may just learn the terms respiration, which is understood as aerobic respiration, requiring oxygen gas to carry out. In senior form, we should learn the oxygen is not a must for respiration. So that's why we learned anaerobic respiration. And one more thing to remind is that since the respiration only takes place in cells, so of course it we put every substance and enzyme in test tube, respiration can still take place. But it is artificial case. But we are not talking about this case, so it's called cellular respiration. One more reminder about the products of respiration, which is ATP, the chemical energy used in our body. The food can be transported in blood for the cells to uptake and carry out respiration. However, ATP cannot be transported in blood normally. Don't argue with me if the cells are broken. Of course, the ATP will leak out of the cell, but it's not the normal case. So, if the liver cells need ATP, please do it yourself rather than looking forward to getting it from the muscle cells. For this table, there are four main points I would like to mention. First of all, it's about complete or incomplete breakdown of the food. To distinguish aerobic and anaerobic respiration based on the presence of oxygen gas. Secondly, for aerobic respiration, which is complete breakdown, it can release most energy from the food. I don't need you to memorize the exact value of energy produced. However, I want you to compare the 38 ATP and the 2 ATP produced. Thirdly, you will ask if the chemical energy stored in the food is not completely released to make ATP or as heat loss. So where does the energy go? Actually, the byproducts produced can give us some insight. Carbon dioxide and water are the byproducts of low energy level. However, ethanol and lactic acid produced by anaerobic respiration still contain much energy. It's easy to understand that ethanol can be used as fuel. This shows that the chemical energy are in the ethanol but not released out completely. Last but not least, I would like to talk about the relationship between the presence of oxygen gas and the water being produced. In an aerobic respiration, does not require oxygen, this only occurs in cytoplasm. Without oxygen, pyruvate cannot proceed to Krebs cycle and oxidative phosph phosphorylation. No oxygen will be the final acceptor of electron or hydrogen to form water. Later on, we shall visit some questions about the comparison between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We finally move on to gases exchange. You may find the definition of gases exchange is so useless. However, the key concept is the last few words with the environment. Do not misunderstand the gases exchange with atmosphere. Since the fish is living in water, then it will not be atmosphere. So how about we change atmosphere to water? It's also the incomplete definition. Therefore, the environment can be general enough to include all the cases. However, for the terms respiratory organs, some students may mix it with respiration and think that respiratory organs are responsible for breaking down food substance to release energy. Of course, respiratory organs are related to respiration, but they are not the same. In fact, respiratory organs are the respiratory surface which is what responsible for gases exchange. 
Finally, we move on to breathing. Breathing is different from respiration since respiration is a biochemical reaction. However, breathing is the bodily movement which helps the gas exchange in lungs. The respiratory muscle contracts and relaxes to bring about breathing. For the detailed mechanism, you can refer to the past video about the two golden rules and seven steps of breathing. There is a misconception that both respiratory muscles will work together for breathing when we are at rest. However, it's not the case. When we are resting or sleeping, only diaphragm muscle is involved in the breathing movement. The reason is that the oxygen demand is not that high when we are resting. In other words, intercostal muscles and diaphragm muscle will work together when we are doing exercise, no matter it is rigorous or mild exercise.